What's up, Pirates? Wraith and Jim here with Awaken TCG, and today we're going over the next color, and that is going to be blue. So, um, obviously, we went over this leader, but it is a pretty cool colorway. I think this character is going to have, um, you know, the consistency that we saw with Sakazuki because of half of the leader effect. So, I'm uh, very interested to see how this plays out, and I'm looking forward to seeing what kind of support we get. Yep, uh, so we actually covered this, as Wraith said, in the red video, but I'm just going to go over it really quick because all of the blue cards are for this leader in particular, so it's going to be Donix 1, activate main once per turn. You can draw one card and then place one at the top or bottom of your deck, so that's really good because you can set up uh, effects that uh, affect the top of your deck. And then you can get a free minus 2k power to one of your characters for the turn, so... Very similar to Sakazuki in the fact that we get a minus to something and then we get a cycle. A um, little bit different, obviously, because this one actually has a cost. And um, it's a little bit different because you can place it on the top and not on the trash. But mm -hmm. after going over that real quick, let's get into our first card here. It's going to be Atmos. Uh, is a blue Whitebeard Pirates type character. Four cost, 5,000 power with 1,000 counter. It's going to read on play, you can reveal two cards from your hand that have the Whitebeard Pirates type. And then, if your leader has Whitebeard Pirates, return one of your opponent's characters with a cost of four or less to their hand. So, interesting. Um, I like this card. This card is specifically probably meant to play with another card that we're going to cover a bit down the line that plays a four cost for free. Um, but by itself, I think it's just okay. Um, you know, you factor in the other card we're going to talk about a bit later. I think this card's pretty okay. Yeah, I mean, it seems decent. You play four. You just have to reveal two cards from hand, correct? Yeah, two white, white beard, beard cards specifically. And then they, you return a four cost. I mean, that's not bad. I think um, that's a little bit of a momentum swing, and it's a, it's a nice body. Uh, four Dawn is kind of expensive. If it was a four six, I would love the card a lot more, but mm -hmm. uh, it's not bad. All right, and getting to the next card here, we have Afalandra is a 3-4 with 2k counter for the Amazon Lily type. So this is meant to support Boa Hancock from last set. It's going to be activate main. You can return this character to the owner's hand. If your leader has the Kuja Pirates type, place up to one opponent, uh, one of your opponent's characters cost of one or less at the bottom of the owner's deck. Um, so, <laughs> this card... I think with the other Amazon Lily cards, yeah, this card is also bad. Um, very. <laughs> very. It's a 2K, um, and I think that is the only reason you play it if we were playing the Amazon Lily package, but that package is already bad, so I don't know. We're, I don't know any deck that would ever play this card. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, definitely trash. <laughs> All right, and next up here, we've got Edward Weevil is a 4-5 with a 1,000 counter and the 7 Warlords of the Sea type. So this is a four cost that can be played with Doflamingo, uh, blue Doflamingo specifically. It's going to be a Dawn X1 when attacking, return up to one character with the cost of three or less to the owner's hand. So interesting card. I think the Dofi list is kind of like agreed upon by now. Um, would you add this in? I don't really know. That The deck kind of struggles with removal, early removal at least, because, um, you know, they run cards like Red Rock and um, Raging Tiger. So, you know, small cost stuff is kind of awkward to remove. Maybe you'd add this because of that, but I think we have enough targets by now that we really didn't need any more support. Yeah, I mean, this this card is, uh, is decent at best. Um, there's not much three costs or lower characters that are being played, especially in 07. The meta is kind of slower, bigger body. Mm -hmm. So um, not sure how this will fit in the meta and, or if it's even needed. Yeah, wouldn't be surprised if we never see this guy. But Ooh. speaking of a card, we are definitely going to see. This is Edward Newgate. Uh, my, can I just say this art is really sick for, especially the standard art for the SR. It's going to be a 10-12 with the four emperors and a whitebeard pirates type. He's going to read on play if your leader has the whitebeard pirates type and you have two or less life. All of your opponent's characters will have to trash two cards uh, before they attack, you have to trash two cards from your hand. Um, so basically, what this means is your opponent cannot attack with their characters unless it is possible for them to trash two cards, if they would even want to do that. A um, few scenarios, let's say they only have three cards in hand and they have a really strong board. If you just play this card, they can only swing with one character on board because they have three cards in hand. Because if they want to attack again, 
They only have one card to discard, therefore you do not meet the condition to actually attack in the first place. Um, in another scenario, say they have a ton of cards in hand and a good board, even if you play this card, they're probably just not going to attack. Trashing two cards is really bad. Um, so I think back-to-backs of this card is going to be absolutely devastating. This card is insane. Yeah, I mean, if you get to play this card on curve, where you know you're still in the mid game barely entering late game your opponent's not going to want to mill their hand just to swing right so it gives you a whole turn um to just uh build that board up see how they're going to respond they'll probably end up just trying to establish more of a board um but now you just have a, a 10 12 ready to swing uh, on your opponent's turn and then like uh, jim was saying if you chain these um you kind of just win the game yeah, no, th this card is a menace. I think the only thing holding it back is the fact that it is your entire turn's worth of Dawn. Mm -hmm. So, like, you can't use Marco Leader Effect unless we had a card that attaches Rested Dawn, which is possible. Um, and there is a white card of, uh, that does that. A lot of cards, yeah. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, insane card. Um, also to mention, it is only playable in the new Marco Leader, but there is another leader we can play it in, and that is Blue Yellow Ace from the starter deck. Um, which I think is an interesting thing, and we'll see if that deck decides to run this. Next up here, we've got King Du is a 4-4 with 2k counter and the Whitebeard Pirates type. This is going to be activate May once per turn. You can reveal two cards from your hand with the Whitebeard Pirates type, and then this character is going to get 2k power for the turn. So, a 2k that is turning itself into a vanilla. Um, I think this is pretty good as far as 2ks go, especially considering the 4 cost synergy uh, we're going to look at a little bit later. Um, I think you're just definitely running this as a four of. Yeah, right. Searchable and it's 2k. Uh, I agree. I think this is going to be a staple. Yeah. Uh, next up here, we've got Thatch is a four five with the Whitebeard Pirates type and a thousand counter. It's going to read, if this character is KO'd or leaves the field due to the unopponent's effect, you can place this character in the trash and draw one instead. So pretty much you are turning any bottom deck, um, KO effect, whatever removal your opponent wants to use on this card, um, you are just saying, okay, I'm going to the trash, so if you're gonna bottom deck me, I'm not going there, um, and then I'm gonna draw a card for uh, what you did. Um, so it's a 5k body, it's not like this is the most like scary body ever that they're gonna need to remove, um, but I think it's like a cheeky little effect that, depending on the meta, could be pretty decent. Like, this works against RP Law, like, bottom decks put it, it puts them to trash instead. Um, mm -hmm. Like, I think it's pretty good. You know, draw a card if you want to remove me, right? It's not bad against the removal meta. Yeah, definitely replace itself when you KO it or remove it from field. Uh, definitely uh, an interesting card. Uh, definitely interesting. I think this might see some play. I think it's pretty good. Yeah, I think a uh, medical for sure. Um, next up here, we've got uh, Shocky is a 5-6 with a 1,000 counter and the Amazon Lily type. It's going to be during your turn, once per turn. When a character leaves the field due to your effects, if your opponent has five or more cards in their hand, your opponent puts one card in their hand on the bottom of the deck, and then after that, rest this character. So I saw a lot of people saying that, oh, well, now I can attack with this character if I do that effect. It's like, no, the... The rest of this character effect is after the fact. So mm -hmm. you can attack with this first and then still get its effect off. Um, and you just won't need to rest it, right? Because it's already rested. Um, so in Boa, this is pretty good, right? It's decent. Um, it is a, like playing out five Dawn to do nothing, which I wouldn't be surprised if we don't want to do. But like the effect is strong. Yeah, I think uh, we'll, we'll probably see this card played in Boa. I think it's pretty strong. Um not much else to say um yeah I, mean, I think the fact that it bottom decks and not like makes them trash a card is really good especially against black decks yeah um and next up here we've got jozu is a six seven with a thousand counter whitebeard pirate it's going to be on play you can return one of your characters to your hand other than jozu and then return up to one of your opponent's characters the cost of six or less to the hand so Busted. yeah this card is really good um a six seven body is like a really good stat line and the fact that you can just like return a one cost Ezo searcher and then send back one of their six costs, like that's really good. Um, this card's really solid. Yeah, I mean, it, and especially if you already have a, a body like a searcher established, playing a six to send back a six is unheard of, right? Um, we've had um, cards like Zeph, cards like uh, Soga King, um, you know, that, 
you know, Mihawk. Mihawk doesn't bounce it bottoms, but it's a seven, right? It, it's never been one for one. I think this is uh, one of those few cards that if you play this on for six Don, you can get rid of a six. Uh, it's, it's good value. Uh, yeah, completely agree there. Yeah, this card's just like just straight up standardly good. Uh, next up here, we've got Sweet Pea is a 4-6 vanilla for the Amazon Lily type. This art is crazy, I'm just going to say. Um, that's about all I have to say about it. <laughs> it's nice vanilla. A vanilla for a terrible archetype. Uh, next up here, we've got Speed Jill is another 4 cost, 5,000 power with 1,000 counter with the Whitebeard Pirates type. It's going to read on play. You can reveal the top card of your deck and place it uh, on the top or bottom of your deck. If the revealed card has a characteristic including the Whitebeard Pirates type, this character gets a rush for the turn. So basically, uh, combos with the Marco Leader because you can specifically put a Whitebeard card to the top of your deck and guarantee that this is a 4 5 rush. But, um, you know, how much do we really like this? I, I think. Playing it for four is like okay, because I don't know if this is what Marco's gonna love to do. I mean, it's pretty good, because like if you did leader effect that turn, you can minus something by two, and then you have another attacker, even if you had nothing on board. So I think that's pretty good. Um, and I think the fact that you're gonna be able to play this off of. I, I keep talking about it. <laughs> we'll look at it in a few cards here, but uh, it's a really good target to play off Ace. Uh, five cost Ace that we're gonna look at in a few cards here. Yeah, right. And and you have the option here to bottom deck as well, right? So you reveal the card first and then you can bottom deck. So right. technically it allows you to cycle a card with your leader effect because you make sure the card on top that you put back is a white beard. Maybe you don't need it. Maybe it's a brick, right? Maybe mm -hmm. you're running a new gate and you don't need it right now. Um, you can put it at the bottom after you play this, get the rush. No, that's a good point too. Yeah. I mean, I could totally see running this card. It's pretty good. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right, and next up here, we've got Na Miuru is a 3-2 with a 1,000 counter, a Fishman and Whitebeard Pirate. This is going to be a blocker. And then on play, you can draw two cards and put those two cards um, back into the deck at the top or bottom in any order you want. So, um, like, the 3-2 stat line is pretty bad, but, like, realistically, even if this was a 3-4, it wouldn't make it that much of a difference because um, we're blocking with it anyway. Sometimes you do swing with your 3-4 blockers if you need to, and, and that's nice to have, but yeah, I don't think it makes that big of a difference. Um, but, like, do we need this card? I, I don't really think so, because, like, Leader already does this for free. Um, like, why do we need another card that's doing that effect? Uh, for just, like, and a 3 cost blocker. Directed, so. Yeah, exactly, right? It's definitely, just, like, a free bottom head. Yeah. Yeah, do not like this card. Um, next up here, we've got Bakin is a 1-2 with a 1,000 counter and the former Rocks Pirates type. It's going to be on your turn on play. Up to one of your Edward Weevil gains 2,000 power for the turn. So, uh, yeah, this card's pretty terrible. <laughs> Until we get, like, an Edward Weevil leader, um, I don't think this would ever be played. This, could, this needed to be, like, a 2K or something, but even then it's, like, not searchable. So, I mean, this is just a filler card. Yeah, yeah, 100%. You're not running that. And next up here, we've got the cart I have been hinting at this whole video. is going to be Port Goss the Ace, a 5-6 with a 1,000 counter and the Whitebeard Pirates type. It's going to be on play. You can reel the top card of your deck and then play that card if it is a 4 or less Whitebeard Pirate character. Then place the rest at the bottom, uh, at the top or bottom of the deck. So if you do whiff, you can leave it there, which is nice sometimes. Say we saw like a 10 cost Whitebeard that we wanted. We don't have to bottom deck it. Um... But obviously this is meant to combo with leader effect, right? So all of those four drops that we looked at earlier, uh, Speed Jill, um, Atmos right here, King Do, um, Thatch, all the of these cards. Um, yeah, even the, <laughs> <laughs> the vanilla is yeah, unfortunately no, yeah, yeah. not Wipered Pirates. <laughs> but um, yeah, no. Oh, uh, it has to be Wipered Pirates, gotcha. gotcha. Yeah. <laughs> This is a uh, this is a great card. Uh, it just combos perfectly with leader effect. They're they're very much pushing this card with all the four cost support they've given it. Like we even have in red, we already have four six vanilla white beard pirates. Like maybe you're playing that. Um, but I mean, I like this card. Yeah, I, if we're playing the four costs, yeah, this is a four cost. This is a uh, four of staple. Yeah, no, definitely uh, gives you that momentum. I think most decks, most colors have something similar where you know you play a character cheat out another character for momentum uh so i think 
blue heaven is kind of scary i mean it is you know stuck to that white beard pirate uh, archetype so probably marco and then i guess like you said blue ace can run it yeah blue ace uh, can actually run this because it's a five drop too so that's kind of interesting uh, but it's it's gonna be it's gonna be real interesting to see um kind of the pace on this deck what deck lists are cooked up and so uh opioids definitely looking interesting for sure uh next up here we've got thank you for loving me is a one cost white beard pirates event it's gonna be main if your leader has a feature if your leader has a white beard pirates type you look at the top three cards of your deck and select either a card with the white beard pirates type or a card with the name monkey d luffy and add it to your hand then rearrange the rest in any order and place them at the top or bottom of your deck so this is a one cost searcher event that we've seen in many decks before this one is only top three because it has the ability to not only search for white beard pirates but also any monkey d luffy's mm -hmm. and then on, and then on top of that we don't have to bottom deck the two other two cards we saw we can put them right back on top and do whatever we want with them right so really strong card uh another four of i think for sure definitely a four of in blue yellow ace mm -hmm. since that deck nowadays isn't even running the sabo it's only running the aces and the luffy's so mm -hmm. this card searches everything like this is a great card yeah no 100 percent. i think uh e, e that this is specifically blue yellow ace support i think that deck is gonna get real strong in opo8 kind of scary um because right now it definitely needs some help. Yeah, I mean, it's like decent, but I don't think it's there yet. It's such a cool leader too. Yeah, it is really fun. Next up here, we've got, I guess I won't be able to get the king all of a sudden. That is a long name and I'm gonna say it's pretty inaccurate, but we're going with it. It is a three cost Whitebeard Pirates counter event. It's gonna read on counter for three dawn, give your leader or up to one character plus 3000 power during the battle. After that, reveal the top card of your deck and uh, play up to one white beard pirates type character with a cost of three or less then place the rest at the top or bottom of the deck so uh wow i mean leaving up three dawn for a 3k counter is already really bad but then i mean this the effect we're getting from it is we get a play out of three cost um like we've only seen out of all these cards the only three cost they actually gave us is this one that we already agreed was pretty terrible um so i think this card's bad uh like you never want to leave three dawn up you want to actually do something with your turn um like if if we're green purple do flamingo like yeah maybe this card's good but we're not we're marco who wants to attach the lead and then play stuff like there's no room to leave three dawn up and i and even if there was uh it would have to be for a really strong effect uh and this is not it yeah, I mean, 3,000 counter and playing a 3 cost seems very weak for 3 Dawn. That you have to leave up not only, um, uh, like, you have to leave it up on your turn, basically. So, it means mm -hmm. your turn's going to be very weak. Yeah. So, uh, shit, very shit event. Very <laughs> That's a bad event. Capital H, or capital S, shit. Uh, this is going to be a 4 cost former White Beard Pirates event. I am pr almost positive this is still searchable with the 1 cost Ezo, since it searches for anything with wipe your pirates in the type it's going to be phoenix seal and it's going to be main you can reveal two cards from your hand with the type wipe your pirates and then place up to one character with the cost of six or less at the bottom of the owner's deck so this is kind of like a super 3000 worlds 3000 worlds is a four to bottom deck of five unconditionally this is a conditional four cost bottom deck is six um who I actually don't know how to evaluate this card. Um, just looking at the meta right now, like obviously we know like the best decks are kind of like Lucci, RP Law, stuff like that, that usually have like five or lower. So like hitting the six instead of five isn't really that big a deal. And we already weren't running 3000 worlds. So truly, I don't think this card's very good. Yeah, I mean, it, it depends what the meta is looking like. It, it could be a meta call card um at the very least right yeah and then one th one thing to know about all these reveal cards is you could i'm thinking you can just reveal the same two cards in your hand every time when you use these type of effects right oh 100 percent, yeah just give your opponent no information after the first two and then you're you're basically golden but um so from that aspect you actually don't have to give your opponent that much information for these effects so at first i was kind of worried i'm like well your opponent's gonna know your whole hand if you can't have to keep revealing your hand but uh it's not necessarily the case so um yeah, that's uh, great. Yeah, uh, as far as this card goes, 
maybe a meta call um probably won't be running it uh, just as like a um, card for the actual deck uh, until it is warranted yeah i think the only decent target i can even think of that this hits is six cost hawkins and bonnie but like and uh six cost sakazuki and moria but besides oh, they that, do run that now yeah that is true. but besides that um yeah very few yeah six cost is pretty rare six cost bow as well as another one but even then like i don't know if we're running that um, next up here, we've got Moby Dick is back as a stage. Um, this one, though, probably not going to get banned because it is nowhere near as good as the one from OPO2. But this one is going to be during your turn, once per turn, when your character with a with a wiper pirate's type leaves the field due to any effect, you can draw one card. Then place one card from your hand at the top or bottom of your deck. And then the trigger, same as the two cost Moby Dick from OPO2, is going to be just playing out this card for free. Um, so, playing two to get like a possible cycle, like a few turns through the game, when our leader effect already cycles, just sounds like redundant and bad to me. Uh, maybe I'm wrong. Um. I think it's going to fully depend on how tight the deck actually is in terms of um, staple cards and, and what actually is ran. Because there's some decks where you can only make three or two or three changes like uh, OPO5 Sakazuki, right? That deck was basically all like, you know, already made 47 cards were like like staples that like you could not remove them. And then there was three that you kind of kind of could move around. Uh, so I'm not sure how much space a deck like this will actually have uh, to run cards like this. Um, if it's possible, cool. But I mean, the effect is just decent at best. Um, and then especially, um, you know, you're gonna have a good amount of removal decks, but OPOA is kind of like, you know, moving away from removal and more of like with carrot, with being able to freeze, mm -hmm. um, stuff like that, which is, I think is gonna be at the top of the meta, which is gonna be really strong. And then that's gonna make this card uh, basically useless. Well, also, this is only your turn. So if your opponent removes stuff on their turn, this card is nothing. Mm, true, true. Which makes, so it has to be your effects. Your effect. Not, yeah, this card's not good. <laughs> yeah, garbage, never mind. <laughs> All right, Pirates, thank you guys so much for watching until the end of this video. We hope you guys enjoyed all the blue cards. There's definitely some spicy stuff in here, like that Ace, that Newgate, um, especially that one drop event where you can search the top three, get a Whitebeard Pirates or a Luffy, and then rearrange at the top or the bottom. That's going to be a very, very good card in blue, yellow, Ace, in my opinion. Uh, but that is going to be it for this one. Make sure to like this video, comment down, comment down below, subscribe to our Patreon, because the giveaways we've been doing have been leaving us broke. So subscribe to our Patreon, and uh, we'll see you guys on the next one. Peace.